Hello. So today I'm going to be trying this uh, awful challenge run idea, which is um, that you are just not allowed to use healing um, within battles. So no, uh, no heal, no healer, no all heal, etc. No healing items, no resurrect, no resurrection items. I think that's basically it. Status effects, uh, items, or not items, but spells are still okay. I haven't tried this before, and I assume that it's likely going to be very difficult um, for most of the bosses. Because some bosses have a whole lot of HP. I kind of want to avoid using orbs, because I don't like orbs. But we'll see. I have uh, the odds of getting that far are slim. This is basically the same as a no-hit run, except a lot less hardcore. And people have gotten fairly far in those before, so, you know. And I figure it's a good uh, opportunity to talk about the game and struggle, which is my two favorite things. Yuki, I'm back! It's Sorry for occasional blinking lights. Uh, PCSX2 be like that. So I kind of expect there to be a lot of grinding involved in this, um, and one of the bigger things is going to be really getting everyone's special move, uh, secret methods topped out. So learning PSP RP for everyone, basically. But that's bound to happen fairly naturally uh, if there's a lot of fighting and we don't have access to anything besides special moves and, like, offensive magic. This is also basically the opposite of the previous run I did and haven't yet completed. But it's been on the burner for, like, two years or something. Where, um... You weren't allowed to use any offensive magic or special moves. So basically the only special moves allowed were ones that affected your own party. And most magic was out the window. Also, no offensive items. Can't play that audio. Don't want to get uh, copyrighted. No. 
Alright, can we win battle number one? Pretty sure it's possible to dodge during this tutorial encounter. If it is, that would not make um, the start of no hit runs very fun. possible to get a counter there. Here I, go. Yeah. I appreciate that Miranda always directs you to Soldier A, even though at this point, uh, it, Soldier B already died ages ago. Those guys count as NPCs. I forgot I can't swing my sword in this area. Anyway, um, I don't think I'm banning using healing items outside of battle. Um, just because, like, it's possible to get to the same area in a dungeon just by evading all the enemies up to that point. And so you could just, like, leave the dungeon, go to a recover sphere, and then run super far ahead. To approach each fight with full HP. And, like, bosses are always gonna be starting from full HP. And, I, I mean, I think maybe you will try to get a straight shot to a boss? Maybe not. Probably not. I'm not really interested in dodging things. But anyway, yeah, since you can get full HP, I may as well just take that. 
probably using healing items rather than cheating or anything like that. doesn't it? Did Miranda's hit come first there? It shouldn't have knocked the thing in the air, if so, at least I don't think. Scene. Most cutscenes um, that are animated like this are not skippable. There are some cutscenes that don't involve any model animation that are just dialogue, and those can be, like, you can skip through the text. But not these ones. And the reason for that is that the character models uh, are just kind of following their own scripted animation. The dialogue is synced to that. But the models have no way of reacting to you going through the text quicker than expected. So you can't. It just forces the text to progress at exactly the same scripted rate as the model animations. Also the camera animations. List but not uh, PS2. Get ready for 
a little slice and dice. Ha! Stings a little, doesn't it? I think it's when it starts raising once it starts raising its head back. That's when it counts as part of the actual attack animation. Counters don't apply when you're just hitting an enemy as they're running up to you. But if they've started attacking, that's when the counter is uh, ready. In my counter, I need a plus 30% damage ratio. So even though that was attacking us, it didn't even come close to actually reaching us, so no damage ratio boost there, besides the usual 3% per hit. Why not make things easier for everyone and stay out of our way? Making ample use of special moves here for leveling him up. Slowly but surely. Why not make things easier for everyone and stay out of our way? What a nice sleep they instantaneously got! There are a number of songs in this game which appear neither on the official soundtrack nor like within the game as separate audio from the cutscenes. Not a lot of them, but a few. Rots is already gone. Uh, Grandia 3 only has two tutorial battles ever, which is kind of kind of funny. Most games, um, which give you a battle system that is fairly unfamiliar, are gonna hold your hand for a lot longer than two fights.
I think the game is deliberately playing a joke on that, too. Games today might call this. Never mind. Like you're already going on without her. Note how the game shows you how close those criticals can be timed. So, um, for special moves, generally the primary special move, like Aerial Slash, or Comet Spike, or Rock Breaker, Homing Shot, etc. Those are usually the only one on a character, which will actually cancel. Most other special moves just do not cancel. Um, but a notable exception is Big Wheel, uh, on Ulf's line. Um, this is handy because, like, once you've learned PS, rating on all of your special moves, you just don't have any that will non-instantaneously uh, cancel the enemy. You're stuck with either using a critical attack, which depends on your character model, distance, etc., or the instantaneous special attack, and sometimes neither of those is enough to actually cancel the enemy. I mean, there's other options, of course, but for canceling an enemy with just one character from that IP position or whatever, you can be kind of stuck. But Ulf gets a little more versatility there because of his uh, big wheel move. Um, Stun Force on Alphina's line technically doesn't cancel, but if the enemy is vulnerable to paralysis at all, it always inflicts paralysis, which is effectively a cancel. Hi, Cornell. Smell you right. later. We did it! <clears throat> okay, now we have to... Prepare to leave the village. And we have all three of our party members. But there's no actual danger here to leaving right away. I mean, besides the risk of dying. Because you can just go back to the town immediately. Which is actually what we're going to do. Because... I wonder if they thought about doing that kind of walking out of a location animation from more than once in the entire game. <laughs> They kind of do it with the plane when it looks up into the sky, but that's about it, really, and I think it's a nice touch. Yeah, so you can just go back immediately. Yeah. 
if you go back to this guy, he'll give you life up skill. Maybe he can do that before you leave too, but I don't think so. Lol. Okay, Alfina doesn't have any skills equipped. Heal, ha ha ha. So there are speed strats to sell stuff, either a life up or potentially something else. Gear. To get access to, like, crackle super duper quickly. But that means you don't have your gear or life up anymore. I am not attempting to speedrun this, just going decently fast through cutscenes because who cares during a challenge run? We're just gonna get access to all the, all the same things through grinding anyway, since we'll get enough gold that way. sucks. I don't like it. It's the only spell in this game that I don't use ever. It does very poor damage against enemies in a circle, but it's inconsistent when the wind gusts hit. So you can't use it to effectively control characters along the IP gauge or stun them in their tracks or anything. And there's no skill shop until Sabotar, I think. So now we get to the actual part of the game, where we go fight enemies. Um, I have no idea what a good target level is for Cornell. I haven't done a normal playthrough of the game in quite a while, so I don't really know what to expect. In terms of how threatening things are.
got enough for a meal. But I'll fry you up anyway! Hey, it lives. So enemies have uh, three different formations they can appear in when when you enter a fight. Um, this is the you surrounded them stance, where, you know, you literally surround them. If you don't, um, if you don't initiate the battle in any unusual way, then you'll appear on one side of the battlefield and the enemy team will appear on the other. And if they ambush you, then they surround you. This also affects the IP position. Position along the IP gauge uh, for both your party members and theirs, I think. Maybe just the enemies. It works well enough for stunning enemies for a while. I don't think Miranda was targeting the one that Alfina was initially. Maybe she was. But if she wasn't, she readjusted to a new enemy pretty effectively there. Since Alfina's attack had already activated on the... Um... On the... The one that she had been targeting. For a 
little slice and dice! Ha! Stings a little, doesn't it? They probably have one HP left. All right, two. All right, we did it. Coming up here, I believe, is the first quote unquote real battle. Where you have enemies that like just actually outpace you. Like five guild enemies or something. I'm gonna place a save state just in case. It doesn't make much sense to uh backtrack. Yeah, this one. They're both using Howl. I'm not sure if Alfina could have cancelled that there, but I decided to go for something that seemed a bit more reliable which was using combo to quickly keep it from acting with Alfina, and then sending Miranda in to actually land the critical. I've got it! Yeah! If you listen extremely carefully, um, you can hear that the battle music is actually still barely playing. Feel the bite of my flesh! I have doubts that Alfina can make it there.
things easier for everyone and stay out of our way. <laughs> yeah, so this can be yeah, pretty badly if you aren't careful. If you rewind just a second there, you can see that the HP bars will actually update according to your new level while it's still in the battle, like while HP bars are still visible on screen. Feel the bite of my flesh. Uh, whirlwind is hey, very powerful. Even trying. It will keep being very powerful for the entire game. Did the camera just zoom out I'm super sorry. quickly there? We had no choice.
Divine Comet, bringer of light. Illuminate the darkness! We won! <laughs> See? I can do it if I try. Enough for a meal. But I'll fry you up anyway. For some reason, I was hoping it was Ripple Shot. <laughs> but yeah, Stun Force will always cancel the enemy, provided that they have any vulnerability to paralysis. So it's also pretty versatile. Enough for a meal. But I'll fry you up anyway. Feel the bite of my flesh. Make things easier for everyone and stay out of our way. Yeah, Comet Spike has a different animation. That's pretty cool. Um, camera movement, I mean, than uh, Aerial Flash, for example. Just before calm.
not enough for a meal. Holy shit, it is throwing the bomb. But I'll fry you up anyway. I think we're dead. Okay. <laughs> that didn't deal as much damage as I could have. At least in single target? Why not make things easier for everyone and stay out of our way? It was trolling? Timings didn't quite work out like I wanted them to. Killing 
pair up and lights on for handy. See, this game just begs to imagine being bigger. Which is something that completely fascinated me as a young kid. This was, like, one of the very first games I ever played. So the scale of adventure and exploration in this was just like awesome oh it has more HP than Yuki Good defense, though. Oh god. One thing that I wish they had done for the user interface of this game makes the if covering over a character while viewing everyone on the field. It would show their current damage ratio and stats in the top right. Not that it was targeting Miranda, but hit Yuki. The uh, projectiles in this game have physics. <laughs> A 
Lol. Alright, we did it! Like they put a waterfall that actually looks like a waterfall in this video game. I was five. There was no way I had seen a waterfall before. I think the boss fight starts when you go here, but maybe it does, so, you know... Time to skip 300 cutscenes, only to find that we're severely underleveled. Oh god, this entire cutscene. I have to assume that this dialogue is here to tell us that Yuki likes reading. And that's the first Yuki voice acting we've heard in this run. Okay, good. Let's just ensure we can walk backwards. No problem. I know we technically wasted the cure herb since there's a recover sphere right here anyway. But I really don't mind. So I'm not too worried about wasting time grinding before the first boss battle, because like, the worst that can happen is that we outpace Alonzo. Uh, Yuki and Alfina are in the party forever, obviously, and Miranda is going to stick around for a while, so anything we do is going to be a big help. For either all the rest of the game or a good chunk. I'm not sure if the enemies respawn from there, though. I might have to go all the way back to Anfog. Oh no, we're good. Maybe. It's possible, I just missed one.
way the game kind of hints that Miranda and Alonzo aren't going to be sticking around is that they don't learn any special moves. They start with, they each start with both of their special moves learned. So while your other characters will steadily grow, these two won't. Within gameplay, that is. Like at least some of these enemies respawn. So her attack there, the attack animation of her running up to the enemy, even though it was pretty close, uh, brought her out of way of the spear. And in similar situations, uh, just attacking the enemy in the air could have teleported her away from the attack and made her invulnerable. Uh, not, well, not made her invulnerable, but made her not take damage.
make things easier for everyone and stay out of our way. I say that Yuki and Miranda have the exact same rhythm when attacking in their aerial slash. I don't know if that deliberates. It could just be that they were the first ones implemented and designed, so they had very similar designs. But it would make sense that Yuki learned his aerial combo from Miranda. You know, since she's his mom. enough for a meal. doesn't it?
not enough for a meal. But I'll fire you up anyway! Oh, I was hoping he would run out of range. Oh well. Why not make no mercy. it easier for everyone and stay out of our way? I'm not 100% sure how she dodged that. That was pitiful. I'll take Come it back when you learn how to fight. They also have kind of awful aim. That was pitiful. Come back when you learn how to fight. <laughs> Miranda is correct. We've got 324 gold, but... We also have a lot of Stormstones, and I think they might sell for decent. Not at the start, though. <laughs> 
General stores are the only place you can sell items in the entire game. Only 21 gold. On the other hand, we could sell his ranch. Should be a decent stocking up. enough for a meal. Make things easier 
for everyone and stay out of our way. Every single animation in this game, I believe including the cutscenes, was done 100% by hand. There was like no motion capture involved at the time. Which I think was more of a, like, stylistic decision by the animation team rather than budget because uh, they had Square Enix. So I always find it fun to pay attention to the little things in each animation.
I'm not sure if Miranda has leveled up once yet. Enough for a meal. But I'll fry you up anyway. Hey. You keep bad positioning. Looks free. Hey, what were they even trying? Everyone get together around the bomb. Enough for a meal. Yuki can't intercept those as they're flying at him for an attack, but if they're just walking up to him and then going to roll their head back, that's an opportunity for him to attack.
Miranda. Feel the bite of my flesh! Whirlwind! Just caught me off guard, that's all. Why not make things easier for everyone and stay out of our way? Level up! How cool is the sun flare effect? Close call there for the excellence. Should have used 10 force there.
Seconds before disaster, frames before disaster. Nice. No, so he clearly rotating my camera there was manipulating the RNG. First boss to go. Let's see if we get this dropping too badly. Some sense into you. This ain't gonna be pretty. Cornell Buster! Come on! You're not enough for a meal. Anyway. 
than a little frostbite. Hey, yep. me off guard, that's all. Divine Comet, bringer of light! Illuminate the darkness! You're in for a beating, you little brat! Eat this! You're in for a beating, you little brat! Just caught me off guard, that's all. Get ready. Damn, a bit too fast. Stings a little, doesn't it? You're in for a beating, you little brat. No, not like this. to grind with you little rodents! Get ready for a little slice and dice! Ha! Stings a little, doesn't it? Look at that one, 50% damage ratio. Stings a little, doesn't it? You're in for a beating, you little brats! Oh, 
Glow Divine Comet, bringer of light. Illuminate the darkness! You're in for a beating, you little brat! No, you don't! You're in for a beating, you little brat! No, you don't! Now! You're in for a beating, you little brat! I have no idea to survive this. <laughs> I'm losing my touch. Not too bad. Okay, so if the opening had been a lot better, I could have refrained from getting destroyed. Um, Alfina, yeah, like you saw in the very first round that the moves were <laughs> bad. Uh, Yuki and Miranda's moves got totally cancelled, and Alfina was able to. Actually, she wasn't. I think she canceled the wrong target in the end or something. Anyway, yeah, that was a really bad opening. Uh, if Alfina had used Crackle a couple rounds earlier, we could have gotten rid of the henchmen sooner and uh, thus uh, dealt with the other two quite a bit more handily. But that's indubitably a win. I'm going to stop here, but I'll probably continue this later, so thanks for watching.